Okay, we're ready to do the rods here now. So we're going to rebuild these. So these rods are pretty nice, except they sat on my shelf and they got a little bit of rust on the one side, mainly on this one. So it left this side nice and clean. This side here has little rust marks in it. So you can't do anything about rust marks, it's junk. So we have to replace these races now. So didn't have enough rust preservative on them for our crappy weather around here. So now we gotta find the parts right here. So we're gonna go ahead and look for our parts we're gonna need. So we're gonna need for some pin bushings. One of those. This is all stuff we gotta do here at some point. That's crazy. We already did the washer. There's our bearings that we're going to need. There's our other pen bushing. There's our rod races. And that's our crank pin. All right, so that gives me everything I need to work on this. Jim's crank pin. This one came with new nuts. Huh. Must have been a kit. All right. Didn't expect new nuts, but okay. And that means I can torque it better. Usually I just buy crank pins that are bare. And obviously this one here got uh, it's got more junk with it. How much? Uh, yeah, we'll run them. I'll have to check and see if that number is correct. Probably not. Yeah, there's the crank pin key right there. I knew it was going to come with that too if it was a complete kit. So, so this gives me everything we need for a whole kit. Yeah, high end stuff, putting all this good stuff on there. All right, so I gotta wipe off the crud off of this. Okay, make sure there's no no rust pitting or gouges or anything stupid in there. Nice and smooth and clean. That's what you want to see. If it's not smooth and clean, and then no good. And rod races. These are going to press in and out. Got the pin bushings right here. And this is our new bearing kit. So there's our rollers. protective sleeve to keep them all assembled. We'll have to take it apart and roll it, measure them a little bit. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and push these in and out along with these. And the rods. I'm going to stop over here, pick up some tooling on the way over. Strategically pressed right next on the way to the press. You have your pressing tools. So we uh, use it for the big end. And this is for the wrist pins. It might look homemade. Probably is. Dad made all these tools back in the 50s, probably. Definitely the 60s. Still using them. Good tools are made to live last. All right, so we're going to press these in and out right here. So we'll do the pin bushing first. So this has a recess that goes into here, counterbore. 
So it goes through like that. And then you press into this tube right here. This is taper cut, so it's universal alignment. So it grabs against the taper and pushes in. It's made for 74 inch rods. 80 inch rods and later 74 they come straight out their own machines. So it only hits on the outside edge when you do it that way. When I push them back in, I just flip around and I push it against the flat surface. Push it in, not using those, just push with the press. Against that, you're done. Straightforward. This is kind of self aligning. Boom. Pushing comes out. Goes in a junk bin. Next one. it for that. Now I push out the other ones. Okay, this is has two pieces. This one's real thin. This is what it pushes against. This is thin so you can put it through here like this. And you push from the inside out. If you compress on the outside of this rod you will bend the rod or break it. Either way it's junk. So when you install it, you push them in from the inside. When you take them out, you push them from the inside. You push them to the outside edge. That way the rod is always being compressed only this much distance, not this whole thing. Only this is being compressed. This is solid. This is not. And I use this tool here to go through the center. So I can push on the inside. And you got to line it up over this hole so it lines up. Now Jim's makes a fancy tool that has an alignment pin. If you're not a, too stupid to line it up yourself, buy their tool. It's not that hard to line it up myself. We didn't need that, did we? These are actually still good, but I can't push them back and reuse them, so they're junk. They're not really reusable, because every time you push them in out of the rod, they are different. Every rod is different, and pushing out the same rod, they're still different. They rarely go back in the same way they came out. off slightly, hear it pop over a little bit, just center it up again, hit it again. You're controlling the pressure, so it's up to you to do it correctly. This one just pushes straight out. Now this is an original rod, see it's got a little dimple in it. Now if you push it this way going that way, that dimple runs a groove all the way down the whole rod. If you flip it over, there's no dimple. If you push it out that way, it doesn't do any damage. Remember that. It's called paying attention to what you're doing. Notice how I moved over when I hit the edge? The dumbass missed the edge. That's why this tool's got lots and lots of years of being hit on like that. But this is heat treated, so it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to put new stuff in. We'll start with the big one. Okay, you have a chamfer on one edge and not much of a chamfer on the other edge, so this is the side you push against. This is the part that had the dimple in it, so pushing it from this side going that way. flush. See how there's no metal being ripped out? That means you went in straight. If you have a bunch of metal coming out, you're not straight. Okay, now this is not equally. We have to push it equally through. So that means I have to use the other tool again. Instead of going flat, we flip it over and we press it into that. You might have to go back and forth a couple times to get the right spot. That's not moving, so I'm not centered. There. Okay, and I 
gonna take a look to see if you're pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it'd be nice if it's close. So this one's a little bit, I went a little bit too much, so I gotta come back a little bit. So I have to go back and forth a couple times until I get smart enough to do it right the first time. Problem is I can't see what I'm doing. Pretty even though. I don't think I moved it though. I'm probably only off by 10 thou. And I'm picky. Like I moved it. Yeah, I'm a little bit too much again. I moved it too much. Now it's about the same out the other way. We'll do it again. about five tons to make that move. There we go. That feels better. Look pretty even to you. Looks good to me. Okay. I'm going to put it back up in here, put a little pressure on it. Not enough to move it though, just to hold it. And I whacked it with my hammer up and down a couple times. That centers it in the rod a little bit, hopefully. When you push something, there's always a little bit of tr load on it. So if I wiggle it a couple times the hammer, it'll self-align it a little bit, hopefully, and make it sit center in the rod. It'll naturally seek its own spot, but I prefer to do it before you hone it, not after you hone it. If it moves after you hone it, then it's not round anymore and true. Okay, these ones have the heavy chamfer on them. So that goes to the inside. Pressing tool goes in. And that goes from the inside of the rod there. And then you push it down flush. And flush usually works on these. Sometimes it doesn't, but usually it does. And if it doesn't go in square, it eats up a lot of metal. Start it, self align it, center it up a little bit, and go the rest of the way. And do the same hit with it again. And make sure there's no metal transferred. That means you're straight, and make sure it feels flush. If it feels flush, you're probably pretty good. But not always, but most of the time. These days, the manufacturers cut these down to where there's no overlap. On the earlier ones, they used to overlap about 20, 30 thou. So you have to grind them. Okay, so now you put this one in. Do not put it on the same side. Do it on the other side. Same thing, though. It helps to start halfway square before you start pressing on it. Otherwise, it will... Take a big chunk of metal out. That's why after you get it settled, you recenter it. If you move it, you saw it shift away over because it was under a bind. And push it down. About five, six pounds, tons of pressure. And there you go. No more metal transferred. Good. Okay, let's see if this fits inside of this. Ooh, it fits in there, that's good. It's got just a little bit of clearance, just like you want, not a lot. So you only got, so you only got that much clearance, it's pretty tight. So that's what you want. You want to have at least 5,000 clearance. If it's tight, you have to grind this a little bit. It's best not to push these deeper because they don't, they always bind up, come out sideways a little bit. 
Okay, so that's good on that. Now you put the pin bushings in it. Get that out of the way. Push, pin bushings have a big groove in the top, which goes in the top of that, obviously. These are easy to square, so it doesn't matter how you go in. Sometimes the rod will have a sharp edge on one side and more of a chamfer like this one does on this side. So we can go ahead and put it in from this direction here. Line it up by eyeball and just press it on in there. These ones easy to transfer a little bit of metal. This one's pretty good. Hole lines up. See how a little bit of metal. Slivers of metal in there. So we gotta clean that up before we're done. Now we're gonna expand this bush into the rod with using an expanding mandrel thing tool. So it'll make it stick even better with the presses. That way they don't spin, rotate, or come out. These rods have machine marks in them. When you expand the bushing into the machine marks, it locks it in pretty good. It takes a lot to make it come loose. Most people do not do that. It makes a big difference though. A bit of metal transfer right there, not too bad. I saw a little bit coming off the back side, but I don't see any evidence of it on this side, but there's chips over here on my block, so I know it came out. See that much came off, see? <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so those are done now. Put junk away over here. Uh, nice light body hammer. Okay, if you don't put this stuff away, you lose it. Okay, these are for the customer if he wants them. We'll have to see if he wants them. I don't know. I know I don't want them. I'm sure he doesn't want them either. He used to have a junk box for them. I'll put them next to his cases here. There's his cases. Okay, we've got to put this stuff away before we move on. You don't put your tools away. It becomes a mess and you can't find anything. And also, you know, make sure the tools are clean, so if you put them, stays clean. All right, now we're gonna go grind these a little bit. Back up on there. I'm gonna take these back and grind them on the side a little bit, just to make sure they're square. Most of the time, they're not square, so you have to do that. Ah, tripod's fighting me. There we go. Somebody had the lights off back here. And it's cold too. It's winter time, so it's cold back here. I work harder in the front, so it stays hotter up front. Okay, I got a new disc on this thing, so it's aggressive, so I gotta be careful. So I wanna hold this flat and keep the RPM this relatively down so it doesn't cut too fast. And you gotta push it there so it stays flat. See, I have to grind a little bit more on this side here than here, so I got to push a little bit harder on these fingers. Okay, so it's grind a little bit more on this on this side than this side, so this race is slightly in that way. Even though we pushed it flat, this side went through the broad more. That's why we're grinding it flat. Now I got it grind flat. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're gonna see how flat this side is. Okay, this one just lightly not hitting here, it's hitting all the way around to there. So same deal, I'll push a little bit more on the bottom of the rod here to equalize that pressure. Actually I gotta push on my thumb side. This one I'm pushing on the top side of the rod a little bit, which is harder to do, so I'm gonna flip the rod like this. If it'll clear, which it probably won't. If it'll just clear. Okay. There, now that's nice and flat. Looks 
good. I'm gonna give it just one more kiss. Now if I have that singing at full RPM, it cuts a lot. I'm just trying to make it square and flat, not grind the piss out of it sideways. Okay, so now this part's done. I don't have to worry about cleaning it because I'm going to go right to, this, right to the tank with this thing. I'm going to do some grinding. What did I do with my other rod? I left a rod somewhere. Dumbass left the rod laying here. Look at that. We might need that. See if it helps. Alright. Now we got to figure out what we're going to do for honing. grid off my hand. Use the dirty rag. Okay, now we gotta figure out what size we're gonna cut this thing to. So we're gonna need a couple things. We're gonna need mics. We need one for bearings and one for the crank pin. This is inch and a quarter so I can open this up a little bit. Right there. Let's go ahead and measure this, see what diameter we got. Appears to be undersized a little bit. Looks like we're about five. If you look at the little small lines, the five line lines up on the veneer scale. That one not, it's about three. That's an unusual, it's got taper in it. Easy gym stuff is within a tenth. This thing is not within a tenth. And that is way the hell different there. This pin's no good. This is a junk pin. Yep. So if you look at your line right here, we're underneath the one. So we're about 11 tenths under. Come over here, your light on one, so that's zero. You turn it 90 degrees and measure it again. That time we're on zero. What happened here? I was on something heavy. All right, something happened here. Let's clean the pin off some more. Something threw me off by uh, six tenths of a thou. So we got some goo on that. We got some dirt on my mic. Something happened there. Usually I clip my tools tight so I don't have issues like this. So first time I had a pin do this to me in a lot of years. Okay, let's check this again. Use a cleaner towel on my shirt. Okay, about zero, nine tenths maybe. It's about nine tenths. So you look at your veneer ski all the way up here. If it lines up next to eight, it's eight. If it runs nine, it's nine. If it's zero, it's zero. This one looks like it's on nine. Okay, we turn the crank pin a little bit to a different spot, 90 degrees, he works what you shoot for anyway, or close to it. You don't want to measure right on those holes, so. Can't okay, get too far off. Nine, okay, we're coming up consistently nine on the mic. So that's 1.1 thou undersize, 11 tenths. That one there is nine. Okay, so it's nine. Okay, that one's pretty far under. Usually it's like six tenths under to eight tenths under. That one's eleven tenths, so a little extra. Okay, now we get out our other mic. Make sure this one's clean. This is carbide tip mic on this one, so it's a little more accurate than my other one, even though they measure the same. Okay, now we're gonna measure our bearings over here. So sleeve came off, so I can get in here and measure each one of these bearings right now. 
Ideally they should be right on the money, but most likely they'll be off. Okay. Yeah, they're off. They always are. Should be on five tenths and we're on three tenths. Two tenths under, that's normal. These days standard is two, is two tenths under. He started doing that a few years ago. I don't know why. That's good. Let's measure the big roller. Ooh, shit, that one's even worse. That's way under. That one's three. What did I do? A measure wrong? The bearing just fell out. That bearing's two tenths under for measurement right. Yeah. Coming back up. Rollers are starting to fall out of the, the cage here. Okay, we're we're averaging three tenths, so that's two tenths under size, which is about standard these days. <clears throat> so put the roller back in the gate <clears throat> the cage. Where'd it go to? Way over here. I don't measure every roller, but I measure most of them. Is this the one I just measured the other one? I don't know. Kind of hit a hit a few of them. Get a kind of an average consistency of what's going on. That looks good. I don't know if I measured that one or the other one, so we'll just measure this one again. Screw it. It takes a minute. Yeah, one might be two tenths on that one. Definitely three on that one. Bigger one, three, three. Three. All right. Stack those back together. All right, we're back in our kit again. Don't worry about losing it. Okay, so we now have our spec figured out. That rag is dirty. Okay, now we got to set our standard on our gauge. Checking standard here. It's one and five ace. It's a setting ring. It's what you set your bore gauge for. This is our bore gauge way over here, so we already set it. I zero to dial out for this, so now we know what this is. Everything's at the same temperature, which is whatever we're in the room right now. Which is today that would be the uh, low 60s, mid 60s, probably mid 60s right now. I'm not too cold, so it's probably mid 60s. If you work hard enough, you don't get cold. Okay, so we got to figure out our numbers now. Everybody likes my math. Math is fun when you're doing this. Okay, so this is 11 tenths under. I like running uh, 9 tenths to 11 tenths clearance, depending on the application. This guy's a stock bike, so it's 9 tenths. So that means we have two extra tenths on that one toward the clearance side, not height tight side. Bearings are two tenths undersize each, so that's four tenths under on those. The crank pin was two, that's six tenths undersize. 
So we got six tenths negative number right now. So that's our number we're looking for over in our bore gauge over there. Six tenths under. Which is pretty far under. Usually I figure an extra tenth in there to my favor because I don't always trust everything when I measure stuff like that. So we're going to go with five tenths under. So what that number means is right here on our bore gauge. Blow it up, you can see it. Zero is what it would be. We're going to be five tenths under. So we're going to have five little lines. Each The one is one thousand. So each little line is a tenth of a thou. So my finish side is going to be at five tenths under. Instead of being over, it'll be under. So that's where we're going to set this rod up for being standard. Right now, these are pretty, these are probably whatever, like five or six at least on this thing. Let me put these on there. There it goes. There it is. There, see, it's oh, way out around. See, see how it goes way out around? That's one, two. It goes over two thou and around by two point three thou. This one here. Ooh, that one's small. Look at that. That one's already at three point one already. And it goes over to four and a half, it looks like. That's pretty small on that, surprising. Consistent. Oh. Four eight to three. One point eight thou out around. So we got a, usually what I do is I hone these to about a thou or so from standard, from where I want it to be. And then I go to the, uh, I go true the rod, which easily knocks it out around and I come back and retrue it. So that's how we're going to do it. Might take a while. I can guarantee it'll take a while. Okay, we haven't done a full rod rebuild in a while now, so there's a few extra steps we got to do. One is I need to get a wrist pin I didn't grab yet. That's one problem. Okay, brand new wrist pins. They got some kind of a coating on them, which is not nice. So I'm going to have to push that coating off when I do the final fitting. Okay, so we're going to have to hone these out until these go in there. Obviously, they don't fit right now. First, I'm going to expand this bushing out a little bit. So I have to have an expanding mandrel to do that. That would be this tool right here. It looks like a hone, but it's not a hone. So you have a little bit of a ball right here, and this is a cutting bit right here. So what you do is, you put pressure on the hone over here, it pushes this ball up, and you run this bushing across that ball and expands it into the rod, swedges it up into there. When you do that, this bushing is going to stretch and go out sideways. You come back and you kiss it against this edge right here, and it will cut it off flush until you hit the steel. It will lightly cut the steel, but it cuts the brass mainly. So that's what we're going to do. If you do it too much, it screws up the bush and you make it too big, you gotta redo it. So you don't do that. So if you don't do this, then the bushing can possibly move in the rod, which would be a bad thing. Let's see, I got all this junk in my way over here. Uh, another project I'm supposed to be working on. All right. Need access to my cool tank. Now, some people want to know what's inside my cool tank. We have old cylinders waiting to be honed, and we have oil. Lots of oil. This oil is at room temperature. I start with these tanks, and then that warms that oil up. And then when I get to these tanks here, it's still cold, so I do this on my final sizing. So I keep dipping the rod from here to the cool oil. It cools it back down to room temperature and I can measure it because these things will grow one to three tenths out around, I mean, um, in size from temperature.
the oil in the machine will warm up because you're using it. So you got to keep everything at one temperature or sizing does not work correctly. When you're working a tenth of a dial, expansion makes a difference from heat. It doesn't take much heat either. 10, 15 degrees is all it takes. Okay, so set this up here. This is our stop for um, sliding against. Okay, so now I go to where the center is, put it on there. Put a little pressure on this thing. Crank some pressure up over here a little bit. Okay. So now when you go across that, it's going to get tight. something wrong. What did I do? Okay, it's engaged in a tang over there. Okay. Did rotate it big enough. Okay. up the surface in there and you can see it. It also expands a little bit, so we're gonna cut it. Okay, that cuts off the brass flush with the end of the rod. Now we can stick it back up in the wrist bed inside the piston. for that part. So that gouges it up pretty good too when you do that. So that's a very important step. Okay. Final rod home. There's our rough rod home. I changed manual instead of changing stones. Okay, now you hone these until the wrist pin will go in the hole almost. Just before it starts, when it starts to kind of go in, stop, then you flip over the other stones and you hone it to side. Oh, 
until I cut and dry it too. Go between the stone there, it's going to get that chunk. center I'm not pulling way back here. Yep. This is getting warm so let the oil jump right under this runner and cool it off. You got a lot of holding to do if you go too late. Get your place to push it. I think it's good enough. It feels close enough. Swap out the stone, the mandrel, not the stone. This has the real fine finish on it. A lot finer grip. I like smooth surfaces that are break in quickly. See how rough the uh, stone is right now on that one? The cross hatch pattern is real rough. So we're going to make it a lot smoother. Didn't see the stone yet. There we go. finish in there, but it's a lot quieter than it was. You can feel where it cuts more than other places. Close. 
with the more of the cores you just want to switch. You can go an extra couple thousand. Take about three to four thou off of this. off real good because this edge is knife edge. It's dead sharp. It hasn't been deep there at all. Now there's what the finished pin looks like. Smooth finish. It's kind of reflective in the light. But it's so uh, pretty fine finish. Let's see how much this one is. I don't know where I left off it on this one. Close. Technique of feel is how you get a nice straight hole. You can size it. Doesn't want to quite go in there. See how it's pretty equal on both sides? That's what you want to see. If it goes in halfway and stops, that means it's tight in the middle. It needs to push it that square. Once it goes through, it should go all the way through. That was just a little, little snug, see? Oh, 
to say. <clears throat> we're talking less intense there that we're dealing with. If it just drops real quick through, you know it's a lot looser than when it just barely drops. <clears throat> okay, so now I got those done. Now I have to switch over the big end over here, rough these out. Then I get to go chew the rods out. So that was it for this one. So that one's drip dried. This is a truant sleeve, which you run across the stone to true it. I keep them trued by how I hone, so I don't have to worry about that. So you can destroy your equipment or keep it pretty good. It's all up to how you use it. Okay, I need a rod hone. A rod hone. Okay, we got three grits of stone to use. Fine, medium, and coarse. There's different grits on the top here, if you can see it. Okay, this one should be the coarse one, which it is. This is the fine one because that's the last one I used. This here is the medium grit one. So this is an 80s number, this is a 90s number, and that one's that one would be probably be uh, high 50s or low 60s on this grit. It's probably six low 60s. Not the grit, but the number on the stone. These are probably about 380 grit, these fine ones. And these go down to probably like 180 grit to 220 grit, depending on which one it is. One of those two. You get different materials also. The gray ones are uh, silicon carbide. The dark ones here are which are lighter. So you have dark and light. <clears throat> these ones are aluminum oxide. They're more for cutting and steel. These are more for soft materials like cast irons and stuff, but for real fine work, these have a better finish than this does. For the same grit. So they just don't cut as quick. They're very, very slow on the cut. Okay, I like to line up my numbers on my rods when I hold them. Okay, turn the pressure way the hell up. Fit it. Rods right around. Now, when I'm cutting these, you'll see them bouncing real bad when I first start. I put my fingers in it to keep from bashing the rods into each other. Bash it into my fingers instead. You want to put nicks in a rod, it can break there. Eventually, I'll put you know, be bouncing like this, and when it's nice and straight, it's true, it'll just be straight as you go back and forth. That's what we're after. You want to be straight.
as you see, where half the rod is ground on and the other half here is not. The rod's not ground. It's great, it's tapered. That's why you have to hold it. Hopefully it gets around the trim before you run out of material. Don't get the oversized bearings. Tenth out around, but we got uh, four out of home out of this one. These ones only had a couple of out of work with. There's still one thou out around on that one. Same on that. So the high side on this is still a half thou smaller. This is still a half thou smaller than the high side on this. That's why it's not bouncing real much yet. We have to get this one down close to the side before this one starts rolling. That's why it still has these low spots in there. Okay, let's just the rod around. for a little while, so we'll come back when we get further along. It'll take a while. <laughs> 